you probably have seen them by now if you've been on LinkedIn for the past year where they have these cool features where you can actually attach things. But one of those features is actually you can send a video or a voice message. Yes, you probably have received one already. You probably have heard us talk about it, but what should you know before sending a voice message? Or if you have sent a voice message, what should you be saying in those voice messages to make them effective? In today's episode, I'm gonna tell you five things you should know before sending your first voice message, or if you've sent one already, what you can do to remedy the situation when you send your next one. Mm, It's gonna be good. It is going to be good. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly the sales evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And one of the features that I absolutely love and love using and recommend to everyone to use if you know what you're doing is LinkedIn voice message. That feature is ridiculously amazing. It is powerful and it's very, very simple. So I'm going to talk to you about that today, how you can use LinkedIn voice message and five things you need to know before you send your first voice message. Now, the first thing I want you to, let me tell you what these things are. The first one is that you got to make sure you keep it simple. I'm just going to read through all of them and then I'm going to come back and tell you how you can go and go a little bit deeper into it. But you got to make sure you keep it simple. Number two, you got to have a message. It doesn't matter if it's a shiny new object. If you don't have a great message, if you're sending an email, if you're doing voice message, if you don't have a message, then it's going to fall flat and the prospect's going to still see you as not someone that delivering value. Number three, ties really close to that. You got to make sure you have some kind of value. You got to have some kind of message that's going to be effective. Number four, you only could use this on the app. And I'm also going to also going to go over to you a a structure that you should follow when you're sending this message. And then number five, you got to have an invitation, something that you invite your prospects to do. So the very first one, the very first thing that I want you to know is to keep it simple. The LinkedIn voice message, it gives you a maximum of 60 seconds to record a voice message. And if you don't know what this is, it's a tool on the actual application. If you watch till the very end here on TSC TV, I'm going to show you that tool. If you're listening to the podcast, I want you to go ahead and go to our YouTube channel and search for this video. It's the sales evangelist episode number three, six, excuse me, 1316. Amazing. 1000. 316th episode. You can go ahead and find that in this, uh, in the, in, on YouTube, or you can go ahead and search for five things to know before you sent your first LinkedIn voice message. But keep it simple. LinkedIn only gives you 60 seconds. This tool can only be utilized for that long period of time. You can also go ahead and make an, another voice message that goes a little bit longer. But if I'm a prospect and you're reaching out to me and I see all of these voice messages, I'm just going to turn it off, be turned off just as much as if I would have been turned off if you sent me a long, outdrawn text message. Am I making sense with that? You don't want to do it. So keep it simple. Make sure you realize that your prospects are reading this. They're trying to get something done. They're doing, you know, functioning in their day-to-day life. The last thing they don't want is for you as a sales rep to bombard their life with more work. Keep it simple. Under 60 seconds. Say that with me. Under 60 seconds. I know it's a max, but keep it under that time period. Number two, The message, you got to make sure you have a message. And what I mean by this message is when you're reaching out to a prospect, what is it that they need to hear from you? Let's go back to, it's going to tie very closely to the value, right? If I get a message from someone, I want to be able to read that message or I want to listen to that message if it's going to be of worth. So focus on the actual, focus on a a problem. When When you're reaching out to, well, let's back up. When you reach out to these individuals, all of these people that you can send LinkedIn voice message to are more than likely your first degree connection. So somehow, some way they may have connected with you already and know you or know who you are. But in that same vein, what I typically want to do, I'm not going to repeat my name to them. It may just, well, I repeat all my details to them. I just might simply say, hey, it's DK from so-and-so. They probably know me as DK or, hey, it's Donald. I don't need to go into my company. I don't need to go into where we're from and all of that stuff. If they're first degree connection, again, hypothetically, they know that stuff. So I'll just say, hey, it's Donald. And then I'll go into my message, whatever that message is. And again, keeping it simple, tying to the first point, that's going to be uh, effective. I'm going to go into talking about the value for number three right now. Make sure just like with your emails that you have to have some kind of value. Why? David Hoffel points out two things that the buyer wants to know at the very first beginning of the call. They want to know who you are and they want to know why they should listen to you. What is the value? What problem are you going to solve for them? 
So even though these people are first degree connection, perhaps you just get to the point and let them know what is it that you're going to solve for them. Or maybe you, you point out something, a challenge that they've seen, or maybe it's not even a pitch. Maybe it's just a simple, I want to keep in touch with my prospect. So I'm going to send them this, uh, this medium as a voice message, or perhaps you sent them an email and you connected with them, you connected with them already for a while. And now you're trying to use a different medium to touch with them or, or to, to reconnect with them or to, you know, bring up to their mind or bring up into their feed your message or your email. So you can use it as, as that method, as another touch point. And that's how I use it sometimes. I also use it as my first degree, uh, excuse me, my first method of outreach to somebody that I have first degree connection with. So let's say I have a dream list of prospects that I really just wanted to do business with and I reached out to them and I connected with them on LinkedIn. Now that I have that connection, I have that point of reference, I don't need to go back in and say, hey, this is Donald Wood from TSE. I can just simply go in as a friend because I'm making it conversational. So I'll say something like David, John, Mary, then I will go into my message out of curiosity. Are you guys currently doing blank or out of curiosity? Have you guys considered doing this before? Now I want them to engage. That's going to be under 30 seconds, right? I want them to listen to it and I want them to engage and to reply back to me. And that starts a dialogue or starts a conversation. Number four, if, so the value rich message, again, I, you could go back to any of our episodes and link back to, this, to, to the idea of how you can create value, but really comes down to solving a pain. If you're going to pitch somebody outright cold on, on uh, LinkedIn, again, these are first degree connections. So it's not necessarily truly cold, but perhaps you have a webinar coming up or you have some kind of program or have something that can benefit from, you can go ahead and just talk to them as a friend. Just say, hey, Donald, I noticed that you're big into sales. We're doing a webinar next week on how you can grow your sales during um, you know, the, the Q3. Would you be open to learning more about that? And I'm like, okay, yeah, thank you. The fact that it took a time to send me a personalized message on LinkedIn, I would, I would, it would increase the chances of me responding to that individual and saying yes or saying no because, again, it's just that personal touch. It's that message. It's the value. It's an added. Or perhaps if it's somebody that could really be a benefit to us, they might say, hey, Donald, uh, we've been connected for a while. I noticed that your you know, you, your website, you're tw uh, changing some things on it. I'm curious if you have a guy or so, uh, somebody, a team member doing SEO for you. If not, here's a tip that I would recommend that you do. Give me that quick tip. And if you want to go to the next level, you can also add the little images, uh, videos, so you can go ahead and use a LinkedIn uh, app as well and just do a screen, just video your screen and show me there's an error or something that I can fix on my website. That person added value and now they might ask for the appointment and more than likely I would respond with that appointment because it just solved a problem for me that I didn't know I had. Great way to bring value, right? Number four is you can only use this app uh, use this uh, the tool on the application. So if you do not have LinkedIn application and you're listening to this, go ahead and download the application. The application is the only way I want to repeat that. The only way you can send the voice messages. You can on the desktop version, you can listen to the voice message, but you can only send voice messages or attach things in your LinkedIn message or to send videos that you're attaching from the LinkedIn app through the LinkedIn app. If you want to just go use a tool like BombBomb to send a video, you can do that on a desktop. And I've done that as, as well. And we've talked about that on previous episodes. But if you want to use the application, that's where you can find the most, uh, the most robust tools that LinkedIn have um, designed for voice messages. Number four, you got to make sure you have a call to action an invitation. If you're telling your prospects something, if you're inviting, if you're telling them about a value, the last thing you want to do is just tell them the value and then that's it. Why don't you, you need to get them to act, right? And the way you get them to act is by offering them invitation. An invitation could be something like, would you be open to a five to seven minute appointment? Would you be open for this audit? Would you be willing to come to our webinar? Something that they're going to do, some kind of task, some kind of action. Keep it simple again, time back to the very beginning, and you'll be amazed how this works. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like. We're here on Zoom, so I'm going to share my screen. I pulled up one of my team members' uh, accounts here on LinkedIn, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see that she's probably going to be like, Donald, man, you're sending me all of these voice messages on LinkedIn, but hey, she's a part of the team, so she understands. All right, so let's go ahead and let me share my my screen, bam, perfect. All right, so now if you see this little feature right down here on the bottom right-hand corner, 
you see the, the icon. This is the application. So I would simply hold it down and the message will show up. And I would say something like, Shannon, hey, how you doing? I wanted to see that you guys are, I loved your post recently on the sales evangelist about so-and-so. You guys are doing some amazing stuff, blah, blah, blah. By the way, we're doing a webinar next week. I want to see if you'd be open to come into that webinar. Since Shannon is connected with me, Shannon is going to see that. Shannon is going to be able to respond to that message. And if you see how this goes, it's just a straight message right now in her feed. But what I typically would like to do is encourage people to put a, a little thing in there. Tell her what it is because she doesn't know what that message is. So I might say something like, we are doing a webinar. I, I thought you might like it. Oops, there we go. I sent a voice message explaining. Boom, now Shannon knows, okay, they're doing a webinar. Let me see what, it, I know what's in that voice message, so I'm gonna click that button, and now I'm going to go and listen to what Donald had to share with me about that particular voice message. That's the way I recommend it. You can go back through and follow the process. If it's somebody that I already have, again, somebody I've been connected with, we've had interaction, and I wanna invite her. One of the strategies I do, I just find out yes or no. Sometimes I might ask the individual, might say, hey Shannon, out of curiosity, do you guys currently work with outside vendors for training? And she might say, yes, we do or no, we don't. But at least now I'm starting a dialogue. And if they say, she says, yes, I can say, great. Tell me a little bit more about who that or who that person, you know, what who you guys work with. Or I might even ask, would you be open to a five to seven minute conversation? Great. Now Shannon is open and we go into the dialogue, go into the conversation. So there she is. She's playing with that. And she's telling me, Donald, it cuts off at the beginning, end of your message. There's a limit to only 20 seconds. And she is uh, responding to it there on that example. Anyways, but you get the idea. You see it. We're just, let's tell Shannon we're just testing it. She's going to be like, Donald, what's going on? So now she's going to be like, ah, ha, ha. Let's send that. You guys seen our team interaction here. So you get the point, though. Um, if you, you can hold on to it longer, you can, you can hold on to this, this button and it's going to go for a longer period of time. So this is a perfect example you're seeing here with Shannon. I can go um, for uh, up to the, the one minute, but again, I don't want to keep it up to that one minute. I just want to keep it right at a 20 second mark. But that's how it is. I just dropped my phone, but that's how you use this feature. That's how you take advantage of it. And I highly recommend you test it out. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and find that. You can find all the details to this as well in the show notes. You can see, uh, you can see back to our show notes about detailing how to utilize LinkedIn voice messages. And also, if you have any questions, you can reach out to myself or to my team. And clearly, you see Shannon on there as well. She can give you some, some tips on that. that uh, you can hear her, have her uh, tell you her experience getting all of these little messages from me. <laughs> so now she's in a podcast episode. Anyways, I'll tell, I'll tell her about that. I want you guys to succeed. I want you to be able to have fun. I want you to be able to get those appointments. I want you to be able to improve your prospecting, but I want you guys to be able to do it right. Take advantage of LinkedIn voice message, follow these ideas, follow these principles, and you'll see how it works for you. As always, I want you to go out and find more of those ideal customers. I want you to have more meaningful conversations. I want you to be able to close more deals, but most importantly, I wanna challenge you each and every single day to go out and do big things. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great one. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also, to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are gonna help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.